sunrise at Darachu looked promising. At the Chorton above our camp, there had been an obvious fall of common rose finches. Mostly males. But good numbers of females too. The dawn chorus around the camp was impressive. and there were certainly plenty of good birds to be found here. These included a Tickles leaf warbler, the near endemic Bhutan laughing thrush, a pair of Verditer flycatchers. The male is sparkling sky blue with striking black laws. The female is a duller version of the male. A male grey bush chat. And a roving flock of striated bulbuls. As the cloud cover lowered again, we watched this wedge-tailed green pigeon disappear into the mist. We found solace on the other side of the pass, where better conditions revealed more mixed flocks, with lots of whiskered euhenas. A few firsts for the trip, including blue-winged minlers, Rusty fronted barwing. Rufus winged fulvetta. And yellow cheeked tit. A short distance downhill, David called in an inquisitive white tailed nuthatch. soon joined by a female fire-breasted flower-pecker, identified by its orange buff underparts. A male black-throated sunbird, and a party of black-throated bush tits. We also got excellent views of this rather agitated male green-tailed sunbird. Back down on the south side of the pass, we encountered some excellent forest habitat and an impressive waterfall. The damp conditions were perfect for orchids. Highlights were a pair of Blythe's Shrike Babblers, however only the male showed well. And a pair of beautiful long-tailed Broadbills. Nearby, a black eagle cruised through the canopy. A little lower, we located a flock of long-tailed sibias. Most were actively foraging. But this pair had taken time out for a bit of mutual preening. Plus an iridescent male Asian emerald cuckoo. Mammals were also on show here, 
and included a troop of rare Guise Golden Langers. Around 90% of the global population resides in Bhutan. There was also this giant pied squirrel. We were now on our way to the Bhutanese lowlands and on to the border town of Gelafu, via Sarpang. The different roadside habitat here produced new birds, such as Asian Pied Starling, nowadays considered to be a miner and renamed as Pied Miner. Jungle Babbler a typically rather shy lesser kukul. Indian rollers were on overhead wires. As was an ashy wood swallow. And there was even a female grey-capped pygmy woodpecker. As we passed through farmland in a small village, we came upon a male Bayer weaver in breeding plumage, a rare species in Bhutan. Closer observation revealed a small colony being established, an even rarer occurrence, with males busily nest building. We arrived at our hotel in Gelafu late afternoon, with a bit of time to explore the rather uninspiring local streets. In the morning, it was a short drive to a wetland, complete with paddy fields close to the Indian border. On arrival, we found a female Siberian stone chat, Despite the name, this local form breeds in the Himalayas. On the wetlands there were lesser whistling ducks, one of a few species seen that are rarely recorded in Bhutan. Another was an intermediate egret, of which there have only ever been occasional records. and most unexpected of all, a spotted redshank molting into breeding plumage, only the fourth record for the country. Common affair included a few little egrets. Lots of Indian pond herons. red wattled lapwings. And migrant wood sandpipers. Citrine wagtails though are uncommon here. This fine male being of the northern grey backed form, which is an irregular passage migrant. To the west of Gelafu, roadside birds included both pintailed green pigeon and thick billed green pigeon. A nice stretch of sal forest here produced our first of many blue throated barbets, feeding on a decaying branch. A perched male red-breasted parakeet. The breast is actually more of a peachy colour.
and an Asian barred owlet. We breakfasted relatively late, near to the river. We spent the next few days in a general area around Zemgang, approached by the foothills north of Gelafu. Initially, birding was slow in the cloud cover, although a crested serpent eagle showed well. as did a calling plain flower pecker and a singing male orange-bellied leaf bird. The cloud lifted in the afternoon and a stop at a bridge revealed a white-capped redstart and our first slaty-backed fork tails. A little later, we found a calling Himalayan cuckoo. And a singing ashy drongo. Close by, a large woodshrike performed well. As did a long-tailed shrike, more often found at lower altitudes than the grey-backed shrike. And there were great miners here, a species expanding its range from northern India. plus a male oriental magpie robin. Our camp was set up on the south side of the Tamala Pass. The next morning we birded the roadside up from the camp. The first mixed flock produced our first visible Nepal fulvetta. They're usually rather skulking. Black chinned Euhenas. And a blue winged Minla. Where the habitat was a little more open, we found a golden throated barbet feeding on berries. and then calling to another individual. And a strikingly beautiful male, small Niltava. The road to Tamala ascends to around 2,000 meters at the pass and is the haunt of the elusive Ward's Trogon, sadly far too elusive for us. Compensation though, in the form of rufous-necked hornbills, another of Bhutan's star birds. Only the male has the rufous neck. The female is almost entirely black, with an orange-red throat pouch and blue facial skin. We were also treated to more fabulous views of a black eagle. A perched striated bulbul. A fine male grey chinned minivet. a male black-throated sunbird, and a pair of verditer flycatchers.
More new birds came thick and fast, including this streaked spider hunter. Chestnut crowned warbler. Red tailed minler. Striated laughing thrush. and even a singing large Niltava. Plus more yellow-cheeked tits. Lots of grey hooded warblers. And a grey-headed canary flycatcher. More rain didn't discourage this white-throated fantail. Over the pass, we came across a female orange-bellied leaf bird. And our first maroon oriole. We then dropped down into the Mangde Chu Valley where a common emerald dove foraged by the roadside. And a spotted dove perched on overhead wires. We set up camp overlooking the river with a fulvous-breasted woodpecker for company. Early morning around the camp was productive, a highlight being an entertaining flock of rufous-necked laughing thrushes. There were also white-throated bulbuls. and ashy baubles. Hard as it was, we needed to move on as the ultra-rare white-bellied heron had been seen in the valley recently. Amazingly, with a bit of luck and diligent scanning of the river, we managed to see it, albeit rather distantly before it flew down river. As we continued to explore the Mangde Chu Valley, we found more quality birds, including this splendid male blue-throated blue flycatcher. Roadside streams were always worthy of investigation. This one hosting another slaty-backed forktail. This is the commonest forktail at mid-altitude. In the same area was our first blue-bearded bee-eater. And square-tailed drongo cuckoo. plus a verdict of flycatcher carrying nesting material and a chestnut-bellied nuthatch. We'd seen blue-capped rock thrushes earlier in the trip, but not this well. They are summer visitors, having wintered in southern India. The female lacks the male's coloration and is more typically thrush patterned.
a blue-throated barbet also showed superbly well. Our route was taking us south along the course of the Mangde Chu towards Gonfu and into the realm of hornbills. Initially, we found this male rufous necked hornbill. and then a pair of the even larger Great Hornbill. The sexes are very similar. The only way to tell them apart is by iris colour. White in the female and red in the male. A lovely little waterfall prompted another stop. A mixed flock here contained mostly black-chinned euhenas and an oriental white eye. Turning off to Gonfu, we found a good patch of bamboo and with it a much prized coral-billed scimitar babbler, a bamboo specialist. and even rarer, a pale-billed parrot-bill. We eventually located our rather rustic eco-lodge, in time for a late lunch. However, heavy rain put paid to any afternoon birding. An early start and better weather meant we could finally explore the forests around Gonfu in the morning. This cooperative female rufous woodpecker kicked things off nicely. Males would show a red patch on the ear coverts. There were also more ashy bulbuls. along with a male fire-breasted flower-packer. Next up was a striking male crimson sunbird. And there were plenty of blue-throated barbets. Below the lodge was an area of open pasture with our first common tailor bird. A sparkling bronzed drongo. And a crested bunting. Further down the approach road there were extensive views across the Mangde Chu Valley. We were lucky enough to find two male rufous-necked hornbills here. Bhutan is undoubtedly the best place to find these globally threatened and increasingly rare birds. Nearby, a perched female watched on. Certainly every bit as attractive as the males. And there were more great hornbills here too. More stops to search roadside forest produced Nepal for vetters. A brief speckled piculate. 
and the chance to film the common red vented bulbul. Once back in the valley, we continued south towards Panbang. Along the way, we encountered another well behaved male, blue capped rock thrush. an overhead rufous-bellied eagle and a wedge-tailed green pigeon. We took lunch at a roadside waterfall. Driving south, we were soon passing through the Royal Manas National Park, the oldest national park in Bhutan. Here, various rivers, including the Mangde Chu, combine as they drop south towards the Brahmaputra Plain. The park is contiguous with the national park of the same name, bar the royal adjective, in northern India. As early as we were able, we entered the national park the next morning. We were now in lowland tropical forest, with an associated new suite of birds to be found. One of the best was Sultan Tit, the world's largest tit. Males are glossy black above and yellow below, with a yellow crown and crest. The females are a toned-down version of the males, but equally active and noisy. There was also this green-billed Malkoa, an elusive member of the cuckoo family. A female black-naped monarch. and a chestnut-headed bee-eater. Plus another majestic male, great hornbill. It was worth checking the ground too, where army ants were carrying away a recently dispatched large bug. By mid-morning we had resumed our journey east, although still in the national park. It was a pleasant change to be in more balmy conditions in these foothills and we took our time exploring the roadside forests. We were treated to superb views of a pair of long-tailed broadbills. Most field guides don't do justice to their wonderfully vibrant colours. There was also this male short-billed minivet, a male black-throated sunbird, and a pair of orange-bellied leafbirds. common Eugenia here was striated.
Finally, a pair of grey-headed woodpeckers put in an appearance. The male has a red forehead, lacking in the female. This race is now sometimes split as black-naped woodpecker. We were heading for our last overnight stop in the south at Nam Lang. As we approached, the Brahmaputra plain spread before us further south. Nearby, we found our first and only orange-headed thrush of the trip by the roadside. It was a female. We arrived in the early evening at our hotel in this bustling little border town. 